How's it going everyone? We are here back with once again another Rust update. So we're here with the October update and uh, yeah it's not anything too huge it's kind of an in-between thing because the team is working on a ton of big stuff. There's the pet system being worked on, there's the server transfer system uh, where you can literally transfer from one server or map uh, I should say uh, to another. Now, um, I've heard uh, from the few little bits and pieces I've gotten from the team, they did say that it would uh, be only official server clusters at first, uh, or maybe just stay that way. We'll just have to see how that all goes. But it seems there's going to be ways to go not only by boat or air, but also underwater through a tunnel and underground through a tunnel. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of cool. They're working on points like that. Uh, there's also new missions being worked on that are tied to a type of dungeon that Hulk seems to be working on, as well as there's a nuclear silo monument being worked on as well, and a bunch of other just kind of stuff there in the background. So yeah, it, it, it's kind of a lot, uh, <laughs> which is really cool. And uh, one of the big things people have always asked for is improvements to the server browser. So as you can see, we're actually sitting here in it and you can see now you've got all these extended filters here, like show full, show empty, monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, vanilla, softcore, hardcore, and then different kind of uh, play modes. So basically all the tags, and then you also can sort by region now. And then you have a little clear filter and a nice refresh button put down there. And uh, if we go ahead and look at the tab, you'll see, you know, it goes basically by the uh, tags that the servers give themselves. So, I mean, the system will only work as good as people are at tagging their own servers properly. So, you know, there is, you know, that kind of grain of salt to take it with. But one way or another, this is definitely a nice improvement of things that people have been waiting for. Also, the options menu has changed. Quite a bit of the things have now changed to a actual drop down menu, which is just uh, kind of a little nicer. You get to see all your options at once and uh, you can just kind of pick the right thing and it just uh, really adds nicely to the menu itself. There's also an option to go ahead and um, show the FPS counter and you can also limit your FPS now. Okay, here it is. It's under screen. Limit FPS in background, on or off. And what it does is, as you can see there, it reduces the maximum frame rate to 15 when it's in the background. And that can just kind of help you with performance overall. So there's that stuff. But uh, one of the other things you'll notice too, that there is now a new general item in the store. We'll cover this more. Uh, we'll take a look at it here in game uh, for a second in case you haven't seen my skin video. And then it also will be shown off in the skin video, but there is now a lumberjack. DLC, including hazmat suit and some tool skins. So yeah, that's a new little thing popped in there. So let's go ahead and check that out in game along with some of the changes. All right, so here you go. There is the Lumberjack Hazmat, and this thing is just uh, really cool. Kind of looks like it has a bit of an exosuit kind of thing going on with it. And uh, yeah, man, look at that. Uh, ignore the C4, that's actually a C4. But uh, yeah, there it is. And uh, if we go ahead and take a look at it, you'll see the stats are exactly like a hazmat suit. Nothing uh, changed on this one, like the Arctic or anything like that. And then in the pack, you also get new stone tools and metal tools. So here's the stone hatchet or the concrete hammer, as it is called. And then you've got the pick. And then you've got the new hatchet, which is totally awesome. Look at that. And the new pick. So there you go. And uh, if you go ahead into your crafting and uh, you go to tools, you'll notice they're actually not skins. They're separate items, but, you know, they cost exactly the same anyways. And the stats are exactly the same, uh, as you'll see here, you know, with the pick. Boom, boom, same thing. So, yeah, nothing changed. Uh, they're just equal to, you know, their other part. But uh, definitely a neat little set of skins. And uh, then if you go ahead to the hazmat, the hazmat itself is an actual skin. So you just pop a hazmat suit into a bench. Or when you're crafting one, you can select it right here. So there you have that. So moving on, we've got a few changes coming around. And uh, one kind of goofy little fun one is that the bell actually goes ding ding if you hit it or shoot it or anything like that. 
Ding, ding, ding. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's, sometimes it's the little things in life, right, guys? So, uh, you know, that's that, that with that. But uh, also, speaking of trains, the low-grade fuel wagons should have some more low-grade fuel in them than they did before to make them a little bit more worth it. Also, radio stations can be added without requiring a game update, which is kind of nice. Uh, one of the other things they are working on is the visual effects of fires and so forth in the game, and they start off with the furnaces and campfire. And the campfire itself actually has a brand new updated model. You can see it's a lot more high res, and it's got like these uh, nice little detailed wood, and it kind of has like a little curve or lean to it, I would say. And you can see that same campfire updated with the car's cauldron, which is why we have this here. And not only are these visual effects nice, they also are better for performance. So you'll actually see the furnace has little actual like sparks and so come off of it. We'll kill the lights too and take a look at it. There's the new campfire. It really does look like kind of like a actual flame jumping and moving much more. And the large furnace has also seen an update as well. Look at the, there's those like ember sparks and so forth. It's much more of a lively uh, flame, so to say. And now that we've killed the lights, you can definitely see the sparks and so forth just coming right off of it there. Nice little embers burning off. Definitely a beautiful update to it. Love the way it reflects now. And with that, we do have a small change to the furnace. You can now see the progress of each smelt happening. And it also smelts all inputs at once, not finishing one and then moving on to the other. So it's definitely way more efficient now, and it's really nice to be able to kind of watch it there. I mean, I don't know. Loading bars are just nice, right, guys? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I definitely appreciate the smelting at the same time. And, of course, that applies to the large furnace as well. I just wanted to show it on this one here. But you're probably wondering why I'm carrying around some C4, and that's because there's been a bit of a change to how you see a breached wall. So we'll go ahead and let this blow up. Oh, bye bye TC. And there you go. Look, it is actually like blocked by rubble pieces for a little bit longer there. And they kind of slowly disappear as uh, this. Now you can still break this with melee, but it's very slow, but you used to be able to throw another C4 or something onto it and kill it instantly. And uh, now you can't. So that's kind of like a nice thing. So the visual thing kind of was a little added thing there. It also is more intense the more your Gibbs are uh, turned up, I would say. But uh, yeah, it's actually not going to disappear before that time frame now uh, if you try to blow it up uh, ahead of time. So that doesn't let people kind of quickly uh, circumvent that game function. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much the majority of the things. It is all kind of small stuff. There's also been a huge tweak to hardcore. The tier one bench is now 20% more the tier two 40 percent more and the tier three 60 percent more and uh you're wondering well what what does that mean and it's basically a lot of people wanted the workbenches removed entirely so what they decided to do is add like a tax to making the tech trees so unlocking items directly from the workbench will now cost you you know this uh, aforementioned amount of scrap extra so research cost of things are still the same. So if you find an AK, you put it into the research bench and uh, you know you go ahead and research it, it's still gonna be the same 500. But if you go ahead and pop it into, uh, or pop into the workbench in hardcore to research the AK, it's gonna be 60% more. So uh, yeah, that's uh, quite a bit more. So that is kind of like a nerf to it. It's, uh, they're kind of meeting you guys in between um, whoever was you know requesting the full removal. So uh, I'm sure they're still testing it and seeing how that goes, but that's pretty much the only other huge change. Um, one more thing worth mentioning is that a few other uh, storage containers have increased. The car storage has gone from 18 to 48. The camper module uh, for 12 to 18 and saddlebags have doubled from six to 12. So that is a nice little addition, kind of catching up on the other container changes. So that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget to go ahead and check out the skin video as well as the Twitch drops, because those are going on. I hope you all are having a great wipe. Stay rusty, and thanks for watching.